For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ten years ago, on June 28, 2009, the democratically elected president of Honduras, Manuel Zelaya, was forcibly taken out of his residence, put on a military plane, and expelled to Costa Rica. The pretext for the coup was the consultation proposed by Zelaya, in which the people of Honduras would decide whether to vote for a constitutional assembly in the next elections. The reactionary right wing utilized mainstream media to demonize the consultation process and Zelaya, and even mobilized in the National Congress and passed a law calling the process illegal. On the morning of June 28th, the day of the voting, Soldiers were deployed across the country, who confiscated ballots and impeded the voting process. The Honduran military and oligarchy, with financial and tactical support from the United States, carried out this coup in order to put an end to Zelaya's progressive policies. The national legislature in Honduras and the national judiciary actually followed the law in removing President Zelaya. Zelaya was attempting to not only better the lives of Honduras' marginalized and forgotten communities, but also bring Honduras into the process of integration across Latin America of progressive pro-people governments that dared to stand up to the United States. Honduras was a laboratory for a method that was later perfected and replicated across the continent with the aim of reigning in the US backyard. The coup unleashed a process of intense neoliberalism, repression, and violation of fundamental human rights. One of the first actions of the post-coup government was to approve a series of concessions or contracts to exploit Honduras rivers, mountains and natural resources. Laws were passed which paved the way for the privatization of the public sector and created optimal conditions for foreign investment. Honduras was open for business. However, due to the grassroots organizing in the years prior to 2009, the coup was also a watershed moment for people's resistance. In the face of brutality, tens and thousands of brave Hondurans mobilized to reject the coup and demanded an immediate return to constitutional order. The resistance did not stop there. It strengthened calls to refound Honduras, to make the necessary structural changes in the country, to break out of the grip of the United States, to guarantee the basic human rights of the people, to end corruption and to demilitarize the territories. One of the key protagonists in the struggle against the coup was Berta Cáceres, an indigenous revolutionary activist and co-founder of the Civic Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras. Today, 10 years later, Honduras continues to suffer from the neoliberal repressive onslaught that began with the coup. Many key leaders from the anti-coup struggle in 2009, including Berta, were assassinated. Others are incarcerated or in exile. But the people of Honduras continue to resist. They continue to stand up to the powers that be in defense of their rights and their dignity. 10 years later, with the example of Berta Cáceres, the struggle in Honduras continues.